Hey Savvy Devs, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll continue going through my desktop setup. Before we do, I'd like to say thanks to each and every one of you who subscribed to the channel. We just pushed through the 500 mark today and it's a super exciting day. I'm so glad that we've made it this far with the channel and I plan on keeping the content coming and exploring some fun Linux and engineering subjects in the upcoming year. I do wish everyone a happy and awesome upcoming new year and thank you for watching the channel and joining in on the fun. So yesterday I got stuck setting up DaVinci Resolve 16 for myself and I think I got a hint for where my problem is and uh, let's go ahead and refer to the documentation to uh, figure this one out. So I had in my downloads folder here under the Linux installation instructions. So if we actually take a look down here, I probably should have read through the pre-installation notes before I tried installing it on my Ubuntu computer because it says right here that it supports the standalone CentOS or the RHEL7 installations and not necessarily the Debian based distribution that we're trying to install this on uh, Ubuntu. So uh, I did do a little bit of research and figured out that uh, there is a way but it's but it involves using a script from a third party and I don't know how I feel about that yet so I'm just going to go ahead and skip that all together and not install DaVinci Resolve on my Linux computer. I'll save it for my Windows one. So what I'll do is first do a little bit of maintenance and remove it. So DaVinci actually came with a uninstaller. So I think if we just search for DaVinci here, yep, we have this uninstalled DaVinci. So let's go ahead and run this, make sure that we do un uninstall it. I'm gonna go ahead, type a password in and make sure that that starts happening. As you can see, it's uh, removing a whole bunch of components that ha it has installed on the system right now. And that was fairly quick. If I hit finish, I shouldn't see any trace of DaVinci here. And I do see a couple things, just the zip file and the run file. I'll go ahead and uh, go to the files where that's located and just uh, remove these two together here. Move those to trash and then um, clean out my trash real quick. So now that that's all cleaned up, I do want to make uh, just a couple changes here. The first change I would like to do is uh, in my settings, I would like to set something up real quick. So we'll go to the settings options and in here, I'm going to go back from devices. This is the last place I was in devices. Go ahead and check out the Bluetooth. So I do have a Bluetooth speaker that I like using. Uh, currently Bluetooth is turned off. I do, I usually like turning Bluetooth on and uh, setting up my device. So let's go ahead and do that. As you can see here, we got the Bose Color 2 sound link, which is my device actually. Let me see if I can't connect to it real quick. So it looks like it's giving me a little bit of trouble. Let me just reset here. Another device. Here we go, sounds like it's ready. Connected to Savvy Nick and So now it's connected to uh, the Savvy Nick computer, which is great. And I should be able to listen to whatever I want to now. So I'm going to go ahead and go back through. And in the dock, I'm going to change a little bit here. I don't necessarily like the position on the left. I actually like it on the bottom more. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to be on the bottom for now until we get to mess with that for in more depth later. Um, the icon sizes are fine the way that they are. Default, I do tend to like that. I don't like auto hiding my dock. Uh, it's kind of annoying going in and out of that. So that looks fine for me. When uh, notifications come, I don't like notifications. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off. You can always turn them back on in notifications, but it's something to be aware of and to be able to edit if you want to edit. If you haven't yet, make sure to take a moment and subscribe to the channel for more videos and follow alongs here. Next, I'm gonna keep going through settings here and make sure to just uh, revisit a couple things. Um, 
One thing is in the power settings, I always like to go ahead and turn off the blank screen. I don't like when my screen just goes blank. I like to keep it on always. So I always select the blank screen to never turn off. Two other options you have here is actually just to turn off your uh, Bluetooth power and or your Wi-Fi power. Not sure why these are really here. I can't imagine that they save much power, but those options are there if you want them. You can also just go ahead and turn them off from their respective places up top as well. Um, and then the automatic suspend is off and I usually like turning that off. Sometimes computers do have issues keeping this feature on. They uh, actually get locked up and can't log back in. And so that's, so that's something to keep off if uh, you have on. If you do like automatic suspension, you can go ahead and turn that on. If you go to the detail section, it'll tell you a little bit about the uh, computer that you have. So a memory here, it's around 32 gigabytes. So that's what I would expect. It's an AMD Ryzen 7 3700 Series X processor with eight cores and 16 threads. That's why you have this 16 here. And then I have a GeForce GTX 1660 Super PCI Express graphics card and tells you a little bit about uh, GNOME, the desktop environment. It's currently set to 3.34.1 and what type of architecture are we running a 64 bit and my disk is one terabyte. So I like to check for updates from here uh, when I'm when I've had a fresh install and it says the software is up to date, last checked, what time, so everything seems fine. Software update will run by itself, but if you don't have notifications on, sometimes you will miss those and you'll want to make sure to go ahead and check for updates every once in a while. And I think that's mainly all I wanted to go through in my settings. I think that sets up most of the things that I like to look through. Let me just look through a couple more things here in case I forgot something. Online accounts, privacy. All right, so one thing I will mention, there is this privacy tab. And in the privacy tab, it might be important to go through these and make sure that some things are turned on and off. Uh, I know location services that uh, can show your location, so I like to turn this off, as well as the purging of trash and temporary, temporary files. I believe uh, this comes off by default and uh, location services might come on, but I believe you get to make the decision when you get your first welcome screen. Uh, problem reporting, I like to turn to manual. Some stuff I like to send, some stuff I don't. So anytime you have some kind of a problem, you will get a notification before you go off and send your information to Canonical. Let's go through applications. So here's where you can go ahead and go through every application in the Ubuntu platform that you have installed and then actually give it a different and actually added some minor settings about it. So here I have my sublime text and you can kind of see how much usage, which currently has none, um, how many text files and uh, the default handler. So whatever it can open. So text files, it's uh, the default for text files. You can see here and it's got a one by it because that's about the only thing it does open text files right now. And uh, notifications, this means so whether or not it can actually post notifications to you if you have notifications active, which I believe I just turned off. Um, but you can actually go through individual applications here and really just set on and off the notifications. So if you find something really annoying, go ahead and go in here, find that application. Again, this is in your settings. You go to applications, find that application, and then go ahead and turn off notifications for that application such as Amazon. I can't imagine why I would want to listen to something from Amazon, so I'm going to turn their notifications off. You can do this for a bunch of other ones. I'm going to go through real quick and just change Firefox notifications off because I'm not using it. I will probably delete Firefox here soon, and that should be it for now. And that's one thing I want to do real quick is install one more program that I really enjoy using, and that is the virtual box. If we just search on Google real quick, we'll find this Oracle VM virtual box. We go ahead and click on that. And then I will download virtual box 6.1. And I have a Linux distribution. So I'm going to select that. And let me make this a little bigger for you so you can see it. 
and then you get to select what type of what type of Linux platform you're actually installing it on, or I should say distribution. Uh, Ubuntu 1804, 10, or 1904, that's the one for me because this is, and then depending on uh, which distribution you're installing on, this is where you select that distribution. Uh, I can't remember exactly which one I did. I don't know if it was 1904 or 1910. I believe it was 1910, but let me just make sure of that. So if I do, I think it's actually LS, the underscore release dash a there we go Ubuntu uh, 1910 so I'm gonna go ahead and install that so while that's going should just take a few more seconds I'm going to actually launch the uh, package manager here so let's see software center I believe it's called here and I'm going to check what's installed and uninstall a few things I like to make sure to clean up any clutter and applications that I don't use on, on my Ubuntu distribution here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove a few items here. It's gonna require passwords for any time you want to remove something. So get rid of Amazon, don't need that. This Deja Du backup tool, I'm not gonna use that. So don't need that. Firefox web browser, I know it comes default and some people really like using it, but uh, for me, it's unnecessary. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that as well. And I'm gonna keep rolling through here. This will just save a little bit of space. Not many of these applications are that big. The LibreOffice is nice to have, I'll keep that. And uh, Rhythmbox, I don't need this one. So I'm gonna remove that. And I actually have uh, two versions of uh, VLC Media Player, it seems like, so I'm just gonna remove this first one for me. So let me get rid of that. Let's see, system applications. You can go through these as well. But another thing I don't need is the Thunderbird Mail client. I can get another one later. And what else? That's really it for now. Just a little bit of cleanup there. I don't need all the unnecessary. I'm not gonna play solitaire either. So let me just move this as well. These are just things that come standard with the basic install of Ubuntu. Make sure and clean that up however you want. And I'm gonna exit out of here. My download's done, I believe. So I'm gonna show this in my folder. And for VirtualBox here, going to simply double click it. And I believe Ubuntu Software Center will launch it. So here we go, VirtualBox 6.1. And now we can install it. Go ahead, put our password in for our super user. And it should be able to install this without any problems and without us having to go through the terminal and install it, making it a little easier. Very good, it looks like it's been installed. Now it says we can remove it. So we'll exit out of here, as well as this. Let's keep this up for a moment, and let's just check uh, virtual box, and look at that, it's launched, great. So uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is actually create a new virtual machine so with this virtual machine i'm just going to call it uh, ubuntu linux and that is uh, going to be saved here in the virtual box vms folder which is fine by me uh, type of course is linux it already detected that because it was in the name and the version i'm going to use is the ubuntu 64-bit image so it's actually this one so go ahead, I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna dedicate um, right at eight gigs of memory for this specific virtual machine. I'm gonna hit next there. And it says it recommends a size of 10 gigs, but I recommend a size of 32 gigs or else you can have issues with some Linux platforms. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that virtual disk now. The VDI file format is fine for me. I'm gonna go ahead, hit next. And the dynamically allocated size is what I want. Again, I said uh, 32 gigs, or you could potentially have problems if you have a Linux distribution. I'm gonna hit the Create button, and followed by that, now I have my Ubuntu Linux virtual machine in a powered off state. One thing I do need is a ISO file, so I can go ahead and install my Ubuntu image on later. So Ubuntu, if we type that in, and here we go. So the download section, 
I'm going to install the uh, 1910, so the latest and greatest version. And the one thing I want to do is, that uh, might take a few minutes, but uh, let's see if I can find the mini ISO version. So I think I should have gone back to the download section and choose Ubuntu Desktop because that's what I want to download. And here's all alternative downloads. And the network installer is here for 1910, which is fine for me. And it says uh, Ubuntu 1910, Netboot, it's fine. AMD 64 is what I want because I have a 64-bit architecture processor. I'm going to select that. And then I want this mini.iso. So you see it's only 73 megabytes here, a lot smaller than the 2.3 gigs that I'd have to download otherwise. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. Now the only drawback is you do absolutely need an internet connection in order to use this mini ISO. And I'll show you how that gets started here in a moment. And then we'll go ahead and forego the installation. So you can see I have it in my downloads folder. Exit out of all of this. And if I just double click on here, I think it's gonna ask me for a startup disk and it does. And I'm going to select that one that I just got done installing. So if we add, let's go to downloads. There's the mini ISO. And I'm gonna choose that one, hit the start button. And I have a problem here. All right, so it says the AMD V is disabled in the BIOS or by the host OS. So this is a common error when you first get uh, a computer going and you haven't in enabled a hypervisor. This is a typical error that you get once you've installed a brand new operating system on a brand new computer that doesn't have the hypervisor support enabled yet. So you really don't have the ability to use virtualization until you've enabled that setting in your BIOS. The name changes between different types of uh, BIOS firmware, but uh, just uh, have a note that if you go into your BIOS, you will have a place where you can enable virtualization, aka the hyper hypervisor in a BIOS or UEFI BIOS as well. So it all depends on your BIOS. You'll have to go and take a look at where that exact where that's located. Um, sometimes you can go ahead and guess. What I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and restart my computer to get this to work here. So give me a moment here. I'm going to hit OK. Exit out of here. Exit out of here. All right, now that I'm back in my desktop here, I'm going to go ahead and launch a virtual box again. And I did uh, find the place where I could enable virtualization in. Uh, mine was called SVM mode under the advanced CPU config tab in my UEFI BIOS. So yours might be something different, but uh, search for something that says that you will be able to enable virtualization. And if you can find that, go ahead and enable that on. Uh, so now if I go ahead and start this virtual machine, it should be able to start without problem. And look at that. We do get the Ubuntu install screen here. So things look like they're working just right now. Whereas before we were getting an error. So I'm gonna go ahead and forego this installation for later. I'm not gonna to wanna to do it right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and simply just power off my machine for now and exit out of here. But I am in a place where I'm pretty happy with how I have things set up. And I will leave it at this for now and continue setting up my Ubuntu 1910 distro in the near future. And I hope you enjoyed setting up Ubuntu with me today. And as always, if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, please post them in the comments section below. And make sure to take a moment and subscribe as well as like the video. And if you haven't already, make sure to go ahead and take a moment to subscribe to the channel. And also to make sure to hit the like button I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.